This is the house in which, by coincidence bizarre, I was born on the stroke of midnight between July 9 and 10, 1856. A fierce electrical storm raged that night. Nikola Tesla was born of Serbian parents on the eastern edge of the Austro-Hungarian Empire in what is today Croatia. His father, Milutin, was an Orthodox priest who expected his son to follow him in the clergy. There were only two choices for children in those days, one being to go in the army and the other being to uh, become a priest. Tesla was not attracted by either of them, which was very distressing to his father. My father was a very erudite man. The training he gave me comprised of guessing one another's thoughts and repeating long passages of verse. My mother descended from one of the oldest Serbian families in the country. She invented and constructed all kinds of tools and devices and wove the finest designs from thread. Her fingers were nimble enough to tie three knots in an eyelash. Early on, Tesla began to demonstrate an extraordinary imagination. In my boyhood, I suffered from a peculiar affliction due to the appearance of images, often accompanied by strong flashes of light. I was quite unable to distinguish whether what I saw was tangible or not. To give an example, I was fascinated by a description of Niagara, and I pictured in my imagination a big wheel run by the falls. I told my uncle that one day I would go to America and carry out this scheme. Then, at the age of 17, while preparing for the seminary, Tesla contracted cholera and the brush with death changed his life forever. In one of the spells which was thought to be my last, my father rushed into the room. Perhaps I said, I make it well if you will let me study engineering. You will go to the best technical institution in the world, he solemnly said. I came to life like another Lazarus, to the utter amazement of everyone. In 1877, at the age of 21, I traveled to Graz, Austria to begin my college education. Here, I quickly became obsessed with the science of electricity. I wanted to know more of this wonderful force. Every spark produced a thousand echoes in my brain. In 1831, in England, Michael Faraday had discovered the principle of electromagnetic induction, which made it possible to generate electricity. Faraday discovered that if you have an electric circuit in a changing magnetic field, it would induce an electric current to run in, in the wire. So this was the invention of the method of inducing, of creating oscillating or AC electric currents. Uh, and it was that invention that Tesla later harnessed into the electrical system that drives our, our uh, civilization. Early electric motors operated on direct current electricity but required a system of sparking connections to induce a rotary effect in the machine. I remarked to my professor that the design of generators and motors could be greatly improved by using currents that alternated. He embarrassed me greatly in front of my classmates, saying, Mr. Tesla will never accomplish this. It is a perpetual motion scheme. Meanwhile, in America, Thomas Alva Edison had begun to experiment with vacuum tubes, producing the first commercial incandescent light bulb in 1878. Edison and Tesla would soon cross paths in a gargantuan technological struggle between direct and alternating current electricity. In 1880, Tesla moved to Budapest, where he found employment with the Central Telegraph Office. 
Here, his idea for an AC motor began to haunt him. In my room, I could hear the ticking of a watch with three rooms between me and the timepiece. A carriage passing at a distance of a few miles fairly shook my whole body. The whistle of a distant locomotive vibrated so strongly in my ears that the pain was unbearable. To recover from these attacks, I took long walks in the city park. One afternoon, which is ever present in my recollection, the sun was just setting and reminded me of Goethe's glorious passage. The glow retreats. Done is the day of toil. Upon its track to follow, follow soaring. As I uttered these inspiring words, the idea came to me like a lightning flash. I fell to my knees and drew a diagram in the ground. Tesla perceived a whirling field of energy. He suddenly knew he could recreate this rotating field by powering the coils of a motor in different steps or phases, like the pistons of an engine. The resulting forces of magnetic attraction and repulsion would literally twist the rotor in a circle, the electrical equivalent of the wheel. And all this was accomplished with alternating currents. It would soon turn the wheels of industry around the world. The strength of Tesla's mind was almost certainly in this sense of visualization. Uh, be able to, to see things move in front of him. You see, it was not a perpetual motion scheme. 